All right, so let's go ahead and get started on 502. We have our branch open. Let's take a look at it real quick and run a get status. Our branch is clean. We'll come over here to Dreamweaver, take a look, make sure we're in our 502 branch, and take a look at our local host at the moment. Um, coming over here to local host. We can see we're good, no errors, no nothing, and we're ready to get coding. So the first thing we want to do is make some changes to the home page. Um, we're going to add a, a main container and clean up our site a little bit. We can do this actually. We can go ahead and use our in our <coughs> step uh, to make it a little easier uh, if you have difficulty following along or writing your code or getting somewhere. The code changes are actually inside as links and if you click on it we can go in and we can see that our index.html all we're doing here is cleaning up some comments and then we're putting in this main div above to capture all of our sections so that we have a target to place our sections inside of so when we want to manipulate them we can be more direct and concise um, you'll see all these other code changes in here and they are just a part of the diff process but what you'll you'll notice quickly for the most part is that um, they're really not changes and that's part of learning how to code is learning how to uh, differentiate between the different changes going on and, and being able to figure out uh, what is different and what is not for us the things that are different is that main and of course um, we're adding these two scripts, our font awesome and our app.js. So let's go ahead and we'll take care of these. I'm going to go ahead and grab the two pieces of code that we want for our app.js, which we have not created yet, and also our font awesome. And we'll copy that and we'll bring it back over. And let's open up our index. So first thing we'll do, I always hit clean and we'll work our way down to the bottom of the body. So we'll clean this up as well as we're while we're in here and get rid of our comments. We're getting rid of our comments because we're keeping more uh, concise notes and information inside of our um, manifest and our readme file. So we can kind of uh, walk away from heavy commenting and keep our code nice and clean and exact. So we'll get rid of that. We'll clean this. Our code. We'll go in here, and after everything, uh, we can peek at our code and see, right? And we're putting these calls in the bottom of our code. So we'll just go right down here, and we'll paste that in there. We'll go ahead and do our formatting, just to clean it up, take a look. So awesome. So now we have uh, our call to Font Awesome, and we have our call to our app.js, which we can go ahead and create that right now while we're doing this and we can see that we already have a problem with our path what we want to do is go ahead and take care of our issue at current time we're not keeping our CSS and our JS inside of our folders so rather than wait till later and let it get ahead of us we definitely want to go ahead and make sure that we take care of that now. So, although dangerous at times, one of the cool things that we can do with um, Dreamweaver is we'll go ahead and we'll put in a new folder, Assets, and we'll drag our CSS folder into it. It's going to ask us if we want to update these links, and let's go ahead and say update them. And so what we'll see is that it updated in there. Same thing with our JS right now. We just have scrolling nav in there. Let's put that in assets and say update that. And it shows us that it updated that down there. The next thing we want to do is create our app.js file. So we'll do um, app dot get rid of HTML, JS. And that way we have our app.js file. And we can correct this real quick. And we'll just follow it down through. So now we know we have our app.js file in. And the last thing that we need to do is we want to go ahead and we want to put our mains in there. And we want to capture and make sure that all the sections are tucked inside of a, um, a main. <clears throat> and this, again, this will allow us to focus on updating DOM elements and things like that. We'll 
definitely do it just right there inside of the main. With that said, where we want to put our main is right after our header. So we'll scroll up to our header. We'll go ahead and put main tab. We'll grab the closing tag, X. We'll go down to our last section because we don't want to touch our, our header or our footer. We want to be able to just call main and update the content inside the main element. We'll format, apply source formatting. We'll see that we are all tucked inside the main now and we are good to go there. So let's save that and let's go test our local host, see if we have any errors coming about uh, as a result of that. And we want to clear, clear our cache. And um, it's telling us at the moment that Font Awesome is uh, an error, and that's because we have not gone out and grabbed the Font Awesome. So the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take it out of our Step 502 example. Rather than having to look all over for it, we want to make sure that we're consistent. We want to make sure that we're grabbing the right file. And so right there is the file. Right here's the link. Uh, well, I'll put a link to this inside the uh, lesson as well. And we'll just do a file save. And we'll navigate ourselves out to our where we're working in our, our website. And we're going to put this in our vendor folder. And in, in this, we're going to create a folder named Font Awesome. So I'm just going to steal the name. I'm going to say new folder, font awesome. Let that register, take that, save it. And now we can close that file that we opened, go back to localhost. And because we, we tucked it in there, hopefully we lose the errors which we have. So all we did was go to the site and download the copy from the sample of font awesome. Also, when we're checking our site, we should always go and just check some of the links, make sure that they're working too, not throwing any errors, and we look good to go at this point. That's it for the index.html, and what we're going to do at this point is we're going to introduce a new app.js, and we have it linked in our file, so instead of opening it from here, we'll go ahead and we'll just click up here, and we can see that we have a nice, clean um, JavaScript document. So the first thing that we want to do is we want that loader in the body. If we look at our target site, we can see in our 502 target here, this loader that comes up over the page. And um, by the way, we can see that that loader is using the font awesome gear. And we have it rotating. And it fades in while the page is loading. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're just going to go ahead and replace that JavaScript document comment, put in here our step comment, and we're going to prepend to body. What we're prepending to body is um, a div with all of our, our styles in it to make it overlay, which is we're using fixed top, bottom, width 100%, z-index, we're throwing that puppy way on top. And uh, we're using some padding to keep the content inside. And then you can see as we go inside, we have um, essentially what we want to be our content. And we're setting the opacity of that to 100% because we're using RGB.95% on the background. So on the big gray div, so that we can see a little bit of activity going on in the background. We essentially just lifted our code from our header and we've put it up here. And uh, if you go and you look at the header, you'll see that it really is pretty much exactly what's in the header, just collapsed, um, collapsed down to fit in the, um, in the div. And additionally, we added some styles to it. So if we save that, we go out to localhost what we should see is that it will load and then it will not go away because we don't have it calling anywhere. So we can actually see that it's loaded. We can see our font awesome 
uh, gear loading and then uh, we are preparing your experience now and our information and if we go back to the code by the way that font awesome um, it's loaded in icon and so that's what's bringing that in and because we're using FA spin it's telling it to, to spin and we're calling a cog so it's really just CSS that it's using to do that so we'll go ahead and we'll refresh that again and we know that we're good there so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and add in a function and we want to call that function on window load so let's go ahead and let's take care of that if I come down and I put this in we can see window on load event it's calling the function get content which here's our function get content our uh, function get content is has an Ajax call in it where it's calling our you'll have to change this to suit yours your um, me dot uh, whatever your your domain name is uh, website and so for right now what we're doing calling that parent page that we correct uh, created in our IOP me site and we look at our pages We'll see this is our welcome and then we have all these pages below and what our call what we're saying is to get all the pages that have the parent of this id and then order them ascending and order by menu order well the menu order is established by this and this is by nested pages and this is ascending the default is descending so we need to do ascending and the way we get our parent id is if you look down here in the bottom left corner um, post equals 329 and the post is really what our parent ID is pages and posts are stored as posts so the way that we handle this is because it can fluctuate and we want it to be um, able to change and things like that one of the things that we want to do in our document is we want to go ahead and we want to declare that variable page parent ID and the way that we do that is by declaring a global variable out here um, page parent page ID equals 329 and it gets filled in here when that call is made so at this point we should be able to um, make that call and then what we're telling the page to do right this is after the page is loaded we're using a set timeout um, that's a built-in JavaScript function and we're just telling it to hold off a little bit to not be so quick and we're um, Just setting it to 2000 which is uh, Basically like two seconds and then we're telling it to take two seconds to fade out and we're calling that cover page ID that we put right here so we're calling that cover page ID and we're telling that to fade out for us. And so if we save this and we successfully get a call, we should see that page fade out. Let's go ahead and let's pull this up a little bit. Go to network so we can see our call happen. And we empty the cache. And we saw that it faded away. And the reason that it faded away is we saw that it did its it's a uh, thing and um, we're looking good but at the moment what we can see is that that get get page right get pages that worked it held out and called out we can see from me so we can see that the information populated we can see that the menu populated but um, because it populated after the scroll page function was invoked um, the problem is is that now we don't that great scrolling feature so let's go back and look and see what we can do to, to take care of that and first of all what we can see is when we bring our response back we bring it back as data and then we say hey for each page inside that data and uh, inside that data what we end up with is our our um, our pages our home about experience education skills all of those pages we get all of them back uh, and we can actually go ahead and see what that looks like if we'd like to by clicking on and going in and looking 
and we can see that all of our pages that are a, a child of uh, the welcome to me um, come out in the order that they are displayed in our our uh, nested pages. So the next thing that we need to do with that is as we're as we're going through them, we don't want a menu item for home page, and we want it to be just uh, just update the header information. So we're telling it if home page if slug equals home page, and we find that right here. Uh, let's go up here. If slug equals home page, each page has its own slug. And while we're in here, content rendered, we're saying if slug equals home page, then take the item content rendered and put it inside the header. So it's actually replacing what's currently inside the header. And um, the reason that we're doing this is that if something is broken, we still have content inside of that page and it still works. Then as we're looping through them, the rest are not a uh, slug of home page. We're basically, we're looking for is active. We don't really have to do this right now, but what is active does for us is it sets a, a class of active so that we get that right now. What active is, is that state if you see skills, is currently active, experience is active, and it gets assigned this um, class. If we go and we look in here of active, and it's what makes the, um, the text change, the color change. And then of course we're also in just um, building on to the page that we're going to replace everything in main with, with the page. Um, the other thing that we're doing here, of course, is the shorthand for JavaScript. The other thing that we're doing in here is the same thing we're doing with is active is we want to rotate so that we get those uh, alternate colors, uh, light, dark, dark, light, dark, light. You see the background just faintly changes. And we're doing that by tucking away in here and basically flip-flopping. Um, and the way that we're doing it is... Uh, if class name equals nothing, then let's do this. And so we can name class name this, and we can place it down inside of here. If it does, if it does equal something, we're saying to make it blank. So it's just rotating between having content and not having content. And we're just adding on to, we're concatenating on to each section that we pull. And then when we get down here, we go ahead and we replace the, the nav bar with the menu that we've built through here. And we replace the main content with the page that we built in here. So that all makes sense, but then we run into this problem where our scroller does not work. And the reason that our scroller does not work is because that scroll function is called way ahead of the time that we can get this content. But one of the great parts here, we're still inside the get content function. If I close the Ajax call, we see that we put this set timeout down here after the Ajax call, but still in the function. And we're just saying, hey, wait, you know, once you get here, wait for a minute or two. And um, by the way, um, I want you to, once all said and done, I want you to call that start scroll again function. I want you to go ahead and make that happen again. And because we do that, what it does is it calls that function after it's been built. And it makes a liar out of him. No, nope, there we go. So we got something crazy going on in here because those are working but we're not getting that scrolling function. So let's go and take a look and see what might be happening in here that's not allowing us to get that scroller function. And we know the function's working because when we click on the header, we get it. I think what it is is uh, I've gone ahead and I've opened up the scrolling nav, and what we can see is that this function actually is being called on page load by jQuery. And what we're going to do is we're, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to update our scroll our scrolling and we're going to stop it from scrolling uh, on page load 
and we're going to make it wait. Awesome. So let's see if that does it for us. Go ahead, clear cache, empty it out. We'll reload. And there we go. So we're just waiting to call that scroller function because without the IDs and the sections placed down inside, what we end up with is that function being called way ahead of time, which is why this one worked and these did not. Because when it was called, it was able to identify this and go after it. So at this point, um, we're pulling our content, we're building our header, we're placing everything in. And so then the last thing that we want to do is uh, when we're actually out on a device and we're looking at our, our site, um, and we resize our window, what happens is our content can get very wonky inside because it expands and contracts and we can end up with pieces of content in a window and we want to make sure that it just truly holds holds to the experience and we can see we're getting some gray down there and some overlap and this isn't something we necessarily have to do for some people they want that uh, for me it kind of bothers me a little I want to make sure that my content is filling the window no matter what my device is and so the way that we do that is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a function and we're going to call it resize div and all we're doing is is using jQuery to go out and get the width and the height of the viewport the width of the head I mean the height of the header the he height of the footer and then we're essentially setting what the viewport will be and what we're saying is to uh, take the viewport height the available viewport height minus the header and we're assigning a CSS class of height to section and header and so when we do that what we're doing is we're essentially telling those section and header divs to open up uh, containers to open up to the view uh, the uh, viewable uh, viewport area less whatever the actual um, navigation is so in other words what we're doing is saying minus whatever this height is take this height of the whole window of view viewing area and we can see with the gray here um, make that the height of the viewing area so when we do that and we hit save and we're also adding a little bit of a margin into the top of the header and the reason we're doing that is we want to make sure that it's uh, when we open this up that the margin keeps this in a nice way. So now that we have that function there, the next thing that we need to do is go ahead, do a couple different things real quick. The first one that we want to do is we want to go ahead and tell it, just like we did with our scroller, we want to go inside of our Ajax call and we want to tell it to trigger off that function resize div so if I come back out now and I clear my cache we can see how our header opened up to the full viewable area and as we go down through and we look we are now taking up the entire window height now we have one last trick to do and that is what about when we it gets resized uh, after it's been drawn and uh, after it's been drawn, we want to make sure that um, it will resize and accommodate nicely. So we'll put one last function inside of here, um, inside of our, our app.js. First thing we want to do, I think I screwed up there. We want to take this function out of the scroll. I put it in the scrolling navi. And um, we want to put it in our app.js. So let's do that first. We'll paste that down in there. And then as I was saying, we want to know when the person resizes the window. And the best way that we can do that is to add an event listener, window on resize, which is built into the window. When the window resizes, complete this function. And we're just basically telling it to re-execute the resize div. We're just using that resize div over and over again. 
So now, at this point, if we clear cache, and we can see, uh, let's let's just go to the top. Um, if we go ahead and we resize that window, what it's going to do is actually resize the size of the divs as well. We can see that the div actually resized as well. And we'll play with that throughout the duration of the project to make it work because you can see when we resize, we want it to also reset, re-scroll so that it would set like that. And that's, that's for another lesson. We'll take care of that in another lesson. So there you go. We learned uh, resize div. Uh, we learned about adding a window on, on resize event listener. We put in a function to um, build our menu and our page at the same time with one AJAX call using a parent page ID. And we also um, prepended a loader that overlays our, uh, the body of our site until we are done uh, loading everything. Um, we accidentally put the resize function inside the scrolling nav.js. Uh, go ahead and um, fix that if you did that by accident. Put it in your app.js. And we turned our um, scrolling nav.js into a, um, a function instead of an on load event. So I'm going to close that. And uh, we're done in our, our app. Uh, and then lastly, uh, just to reiterate what we did is we took, uh, made a main div, uh, main element and captured all of our, our section content inside of it and we added our font awesome and our app.js. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to close it. We're in branch 502 right now. I'm going to go out and do one last test before we go ahead and do a commit. Go into our 5x. We can see that we're now uh, loading that. Let's go ahead and inspect. Check for errors. Reload again. And we saw how our page opened up there because our resize kicked in. No, none of that. Everything is working the way that we want it to. Our, our sections are now taking up the full window width and height, which is great. And we can see that we're actually, all of our content has come from our me site, as well as our menu items because we've done them in lowercase. Cool. So that wraps up this. Let's go on out to Git. Let's um, do a Git status. We can see all our changes that have come in. Uh, let's do a git add. Do another git status just to see that they came in. Awesome, we can see all of our files that have changed and actually we're good. So let's do git commit. We'll do a message. Added app.js file that's enough for that because we don't really need to go in detail too much about what's in there because um, we can see it in the branch and we can see that everything in there is new nothing has been modified um, updated scrolling on load event to be function and added main element to index.html. We also added the link to the app.js in the, yeah, let's say, and font awesome in the Text.html. Hit commit. We should be good at this point. Get status. Everything is great. We're ready to go ahead and merge to production. See you in the next video.